move to esports. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a big um, one. Yeah, this was the one that was like very interesting to me. So, so um, the first one, and I knew this when it came out. I think it was conscientiously, and it matched the graphic design. They changed the colors up or whatever. But there was a video game called America's Army. I don't know if anyone... This is around the time I gave up on gaming because I was too slow and crummy at it and I just wasn't, you know, I got too busy or whatever. But, like, um, there was a game called America's Army that was kind of a combined creation of the... um, of a graduate of the Naval Postgraduate School named Mike Caps and another guy named uh, Wardinsky. Um, And, and, um, you know, they... They designed Unreal Tournament, Unreal Tournament, what I, I think uh, Gears of War, uh, Shadow Complex, Infinity Blade, Bullet Storm, and, and Quantum Break, which all are games I don't even. Those are games I've never played, but I have heard of. Like this is why mm-hmm. by the time I was I was not interested in gaming that well to know those games. I've heard of all of them. You know what I mean? Um, so these were like kind of big hitters that collaborated to develop this army recruiting tool that I know got wildly popular. Uh, for a little while, I know I downloaded it and, and dorked around on it um, as a as a major kind of early first person shooter. And that guy now is um, involved in AI and kind of I think moving in the same direction. It's called Dive Plane, and I think he's working on some kind of 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 AI in the same field. Uh, the other fellow Wardinsky who collaborated to create it is just in case you live in Alabama's fifth congressional district, running for election. Uh, in Alabama, so I maybe recommend against supporting him. I don't know all of his policies, but um, the fact that he's part of this like, recruiting machine, and at the same time, or just a little bit later, the Marine Corps was slow to the game on this. I used to play a video game series when I was in a video game called Close Combat, and it was kind of a a, a squad based like overhead view real time strategy that I thought was really cool. Um, And it was kind of unique and it had some interesting realism aspects. And the Marine Corps got in bed with uh, Destineer and 2K Games. I don't know if you've heard of either of those yourself, but I love the games that they produced in this series called Close Combat. And they completely destroyed and changed it into a deliberate recruiting tool they called Close Combat First to Fight um, that a friend of mine got into. So... um, kind of going back, you know, thinking about how they, they, they do destroy art, like when they, they change that series, the code, into something that was, you know, at least going somewhere into crap, and this they kind of, I don't know, it, maybe it was more popular with other people, but they, um, and then, and now they've kind of gone further into actually having, and you know these stories, but they've had esports teams, I know you covered this a while ago, but the military... The military has a sports team for everything. They have a, a army football team and a Marine Corps football team that play sort of an intramural league, and so these. And then they would love nothing more than to be competitive on a higher level and to advertise that that they're you know that they're sports teams. But in esports, they actually manage because the Marine Corps, or the military manages to recruit. I don't. Well, I don't know how competitive their their esports teams are with like the top tier because I don't follow esports. But the fact is that they create these esports teams. And they, they go out there and recruiters actively recruit through um, different esporting games. They're messaging kids that are underage, very young. Um, whether you know you should maybe think about joining the military, like get sliding into the DMs on kids, all like groomers, basically trying to groom kids through gaming. Um, and I imagine it's working, and because gaming's pretty popular among the military already. And I literally know I know people who like want to make the air force esports team so they 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 think they're so good at what's this the soccer where they're driving cars rocket league or something like that that they go to these conventions and they they're desperate to make it onto the team and the purpose for that is recruiting it's not just and it's to show kids that yeah you can join the military and still be into gaming too you know what i mean right um well, it's a little yeah. bit more nefarious, too, because it's not just that they're going to the tournaments, but they actually maintain Twitch accounts, which is yeah. like the, uh, for people who don't know, the YouTube of gaming. It's a, like a social uh, media uh, slash, like, you know, content distribution plat- platform where, you know, you sit there and you game and you interact with, like, the people watching you. And so they'll sit there and play Call of Duty and then talk with whoever's watching. Well, I could tell you from working in a school, 
kids watch Twitch. You know what I mean? I, I don't I, I don't know how many 20 year olds. I'm sure there are some 20 year olds watching Twitch. I'm sure there's some a few older people, but a lot of these people are under 18 years old and they're, you know, watching the military. And, you know, I remember like uh, Call of Duty. I played a lot during high school and it like, you know, reinforced a lot of the militarism stuff for me in that, you know, you get like you talk about the guns and, you know, which one's better than MP5K or, you know, you talk about the Predator drones and the AC-130 and then, you know, you also don't just like play it on the game you look it up on wikipedia and then you know about the weapon and you know then there's some video of a general talking about how much that thing kits ass and you know how it like gets the terrorists for us and stuff like and it's very easy to just you know get consumed in all of that and uh, I, i'm sure the military is finding twitch a very effective recruiting tool yeah and so it's crazy because they go from they literally have developed their own games i imagine i, I don't have the i can't you know, show you this, but I imagine they play a role in developing games that they don't develop themselves, that they get, they get that editorial discipline by, you know, contributing to the storylines. And then they use, so it's like at, at every level, they, they develop them, they tweak the storylines of things that are out there. Um, there's a great podcast by um, the guy, Eyes Left. Um, it's like left wing veterans. It's the guy, Spencer Rapone, the West Point graduate who famously like, had communism will prevail on his shirt or whatever underneath his uniform at graduation. Um, but he did a podcast. They, I think they're on Twitch now, which I'm not, I, so I miss everything they produce. But when they were putting out a podcast, they did a great episode about how essentially the highway of death slaughter that we did was sanitized and recast as something the Russians did. Um, in the latest version of some video, I, I think of, uh, what was the one you mentioned that's Call really of popular? Duty. Call of Duty. Yeah. Like the latest version. They basically have a highway of death incident, um, but show the Russians doing it as the bad guys instead of the Americans doing it. But everything else is the highway of death. So they did a great episode where they covered that. And there's no, I, as far as I know, you don't have the smoking gun as to whether the military actually massaged that story. But it just would be, it would be of a piece with everything there else, else they're trying to do in the media, more ge entertainment more generally you know, change their image and ensure that they come out in the positive light. So you have, it's, it's, and you know what's funny is too, honestly, people learn history and stuff like that from movies and video games. Let's, let's be real honest. Myself, and I'm a history nerd, some wars, what I know about them is from the movie I watched about them. You know what I mean? The the Spanish, the, 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 the Filipino revolt against the Spanish, I only know about because of 1898, the ultimos to the Filipinos. You know what I mean? Otherwise, I know almost nothing about that war. As, as interested as I am, you know, there's only so many hours in the day. And so when people are learning their history through a video game that says the highway of death was the Russians, I guarantee there's a lot of kids running around out there who think that. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, and if they have a role in just recasting and changing that history, it's it's so nefarious on so many levels. And it's, every, and it's wildly popular. You yeah. know? Um, so... Yeah, and that the only yeah, any any other thoughts on video games? No, that was all I, I had on video games. Yeah. Just that you know, it, just think about how much like you think about a, a kid you know, especially if it's like a young male, and how much time they spend playing video games. I mean, that's probably one of the primary influences in their life. Yeah, it really, it almost certainly is, and and you know, God knows how many people think like you know they want to talk about the military through what they learned in a video game, and I can understand why it's. It replicates it, but like, it, and God knows that we have a lot of trouble getting kids away from video games in general and into other things. And there's not, I'm not even, I'm not even preaching the video games are all bad, but the fact that so many of them are militarist, how do you guide your kids away from that or towards something that isn't going to just be a recruiting tool, a propaganda tool, right? And a propaganda and recruiting tool, right? Combined and is what it effectively is. Yeah, it's just so much misreality of war, like the fact that like civilians don't exist in any of these things, and mm -hmm. you know people hit the respond button, and that's just you know what I mean. Like it, it just it, it's so easy, you know. And, and like a lot of times you turn off friendly fire, so that's not an issue either. But.